Those who will go to heaven, part 3. First lesson, St. Luke chapter 14, verse 26. Second lesson, St. Mark chapter 8, verse 34. Golden text, St. Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. Quote, If any man... If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sister, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Brethren, this is the third and last installment of those who will go to heaven. On the first day, when the gospel was given, people feel that because they have left fornication, they are free. But that is not all. Their, the second installment was also distributing your wealth to the poor. What about that of today? Many people call themselves Christians and say that they wait for Jesus Christ. Can it be done without faith? The Gospel of today proves to you those who are in readiness to go to heaven. Christ spoke these words clearly, not in parable. He told his, he told his disciples that if they did not do these words, they can never be where he is and they can never reign with him. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you so that where I am, there you may be also. Brethren, if you can't follow him on earth, how can you follow him in heaven? Christ said that after the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom is gained by struggling for it. Now, show me a single individual who is a follower of Christ with the members of his family and his friends. Did Christ do, did Christ do his father's work with his mother and father? Don't you remember an occasion when his mother and brethren sought for him and his disciples told him that his mother and brethren were looking for him? How he stretched out his hands over his disciples and said, Those who hear what I say and do what I teach are my mothers and brethren. When Christ was taken by the Spirit into the desert to pray, did he go there with his mother and father? He forsook his mother, father, and brethren, and he never stayed in Nazareth. Up till today, people wonder whether Christ had sisters and brothers. He forsook personal enjoyment to do the work of his father. Brethren, I put this question to you. What is your preparation to meet Christ? Don't you know it was written that there will be Antichrist? When the people of the world talk about false prophets, they mention brotherhood. If all these churches say that they are followers of Christ, yet they don't practice his teachings. Are they not false prophets? Peter asked our Lord Jesus Christ, As we have left all things and followed you, what will be our gain? Christ replied, That all those who left their father, mother, and follow, all who left their father, mother, children, wife, and relations, and all the pleasures of this life and for their own lives 
when all things are made perfect and he will be in the kingdom of his father they will sit on the twelve thrones to judge the twelve tribes of Israel and they will receive a hundredfold of what they left plus eternal life in the wide world today which person has forsake mother father children sisters brothers wife to follow Christ who has surrendered his life to Christ now since you haven't done this what is what is in your mind he says I am a jealous God if you love mother or father then you don't love Christ Paul surrendered everything to follow Christ people carry their Bibles every day and proclaim themselves as followers of Christ which Christ when you go home read the scriptures again for they are the real words of God Christ became poor for his father's sake you who say you have God have you surrendered your wealth so that you may have Christ said Paul said what would have been gained to me I count as loss so that I may have Christ Paul forsook his profession wife children relations etc and suffered many indignities for the sake of the gospel so that he may possess Christ Peter and other disciples did the same so that they may have even a small place in heaven the apostles Levi and Matthew did the same now brethren you have faith that on that day you will be taken up on what do you base your faith don't you know that Christ has come back not to have anything to do with the world nor go from street to street preaching but he has come to take those who forsake all and even their lives and carry them to heaven don't you see that today it's your mother father brother sister wife husband children and the enjoyment of life that has hindered you from following Christ it is written that all those who loved their parents or children and the pleasures of the world have no share in heaven or in the new earth those who are ashamed to confess my name to people on earth I will be ashamed to confess their their names before my father I will forsake those who forsake me you find people saying Christ the good friend of all if he is your friend do you keep his commandments how many people believe his words and do them God has come down with his only son to strengthen all things so that they make so that they may take to heaven those that belong to heaven and leave the earthly ones on earth the holy angels are telling us what we should do and what we should not do who are these who are those people prepared to go up who are those prepared to remain on earth remember the barren fig tree Christ cursed it because there was no fruits on it and the next day morning it withered to whom does the parable refer to the churches you and me who in the churches are prepared to do his work and his words who in this house where we are now is prepared to own Christ and make up his mind to follow him you can't follow him by words of mouth you have to follow him with your whole heart and mind let each person ask himself today whether he loves Christ 
Christ says that he who loves me will keep my commandments and my father will love him and we will make our abode in him. Therefore, if we love Christ, we will keep his commandment today. First lesson, then Luke chapter 14, verse 26. If any man come unto me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters and yea, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Of all that is counted in this text, which is the one that concerns money? I don't ask you to do this gospel. I am only revealing the gospel of truth to only those who will be going to heaven. I told you before that there are three marks that indicate those who will go to heaven. I am merely revealing these marks to you to get you prepared for anywhere you may be taken to. I am not asking you to leave your parents or brethren. I tell you these things so that you may work with hope and gladness so that you may not feel disappointed when those with these marks will be carried up to heaven. And at that time, you will not turn around to say that the leader has deceived you. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. So do not be satisfied with saying, I am brotherhood. Yes, everything else is brotherhood. The trees, the water, Lucifer himself is brotherhood. But the scriptures clearly states that only those who possess, possess these heavenly qualities will be taken up to heaven to be with him. Let us ask ourselves whether we have these signs because heaven and earth will pass away but the words, but not the words of God. Do not interpret the word of God to suit yourself. Some people say that it does not mean that you should hate his mother. I tell you that it means so. Now, is it not your wife, parents, child, etc. that made you to be in enmity with God? Don't you remember the young man who was called by Christ to follow him? He gave Christ the excuse that he wanted to go and bury his father first. Christ said to him, let the dead bury the dead. Now you complain. Now your complaint is that your children or husbands have stopped you from knowing God and going on ministry work. Are they not stumbling blocks? You keep on saying, who will look after my children? What will they eat? Supposing a chariot was brought down here now for you to enter and go to heaven. How many of you here will be ready to jump into the chariot leaving all the children, parents and relatives behind? I tell you that you won't be able. You will think about the children and relatives that they should come as well. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, don't keep your treasures unhurt, because where your treasure is, there will your heart be. How can you go up to heaven when your heart is still on your relation? When your child is sick, you query God, asking why the child should be sick. Do you see your setback? If you don't follow Christ, these are the things that hinder you. So whatever happens to you as a result of this, Christ is not responsible. Christ has said openly that if you don't hate your relation, you can't be his disciple. This is not a law or commandment. It is just the simple gospel truth. It is now left 
to you to make up your mind whether you will follow him or not. Those who Christ has given the power to do this gospel will do it because the power to do it comes from above. Don't you remember when Christ said, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the puffs which never gave suck. Don't you see how children worry you? A pregnant woman is, is not sure of what will happen to her till the day she delivers the child. She continues to live in fear till that day. When a pregnant woman goes to church, it isn't for the love of God, but for God's protection against that day of uncertainty. Abram and the sacrificial lamb. Now, we place before you Christ, children, wife, mother, and so forth. Choose one. Christ says that if you choose me, you must forsake every other thing. He also said that one who looks for his life shall lose it. But one who forsakes his life for his sake will save it. Don't you remember Abraham's faith? He walked three days and three nights to the place where he was to offer sacrifice to God. He got everything ready for the sacrifice. But there was no lamb. Isaac, his only son, questioned him about the lamb. And he replied that the Lord will provide. And the Lord did provide a lamb just as he lifted up his hand to cut off Isaac's head for the sacrifice. Did Abraham not hate his only son? Did he refuse to offer him for sacrifice? The same Abraham was going with his wife to buy corn and he was instructed in a dream that when they go to the place he should say that Sarah was not his wife. Now, when the king of that country saw Sarah, he loved her and sent someone to go and, 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 and find out whether she was Abraham's wife. The reply was no. He therefore asked that Sarah be brought to him. Abraham raised no argument. But here today, you can't stand someone else conversing with your wife, even if they say he is Christ. At night, God sent an angel to rebuke the king for his action, and he explained that he did not know that Sarah was Abraham's wife. Today, you may say that you are a good brotherhood member, yet you don't allow your wife to go and minister to her for fear, that, for fear of her being loved by someone. If your husband go on ministry work, you fear that he will love another woman. If your wife sends a present to a brother, you interpret her action and then confusion comes between you. If a brother brought, brought a sultan for a sister, the wife will get annoyed now ask yourself if whether it is not your wife or husband who prevents you from serving christ if you quarrel with people you are a confusionist you cannot be christ's follower and you cannot go to heaven christ said that he he separates himself from the joys of this world for our sake so that Truth may be ours. Don't you see that if you separate yourself for Christ, you will see the truth and the truth will help you to separate others for Christ. But today, you find it difficult to separate yourself from your wife and children. Well, the question is, how many the question is, how can you go to heaven? The advice your wife or husband gives you will not save you. They say that because you attach yourself more to members of your church, 
you forget about your family. If you don't let go of the ways of your wife, husband, children, mother, father, and relations, and follow Christ, you will be lost. You must follow him because he is the light, the truth, and the only way to heaven. Second lesson, St. Mark chapter 8, verse 34. And when he had called the people unto him, with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You must deny yourself the comfort of life. He said that he who follows him must be ready and willing to suffer and to deny himself the comfort and pleasure of this life and must leave pride and arrogance and humble himself by going from house to house preaching the gospel of our Lord, suffering and death. As you spread the gospel along, you may m meet with opposition. This may lead to abuses and beatings and other kinds of disgrace. This is how to carry the cross of Christ. The carrying of the cross will let you talk to people you would not have talked to. It will also compel you to enter into houses you would never have entered. When rain or sun does not stop you from spreading the gospel, when you accept humiliation because of Christ and complain not, when you are prepared to go naked because of Christ, you will surely go to heaven. You must be very accommodating by agreeing to see another person's point of view. You must be prepared to go and ministry work at any time the need arises. You must bear one another's burden. This is Christianity, pure and simple. He said, if you want to be my disciple, take up the cross and follow me. He did not say, take your wife, children, money, cars, relations, and so forth, and follow me. By bearing one another's burden and taking up the cross, you are letting the light of Christ to shine everywhere. This is difficult to do, but it is the only sure way to heaven. For it was the only narrow path that our Lord Jesus Christ took. And anybody who wants to go to heaven must surely follow in his footprints. He must be very humble. He must teach his children this humility by doing the least job in the house, such as fetching water and so forth. You can see a well to do man going about with shoes going about without shoes are costly and expensive clothes when they prepare him good food in the house he cannot eat it because he is always fasting he teaches people the importance of mortification of the flesh. This teaching takes one to the new kingdom. It is said that he who does not keep these commandments and teaches others not to do so will have no place in the kingdom. But, who, but he who receives it and teaches others the same is saved. We must be prepared to forego anything to gain the kingdom. If anyone spits on you or slaps you, just say, may the peace of God be with you. If you don't behave in this way, you are not for the kingdom. Don't think of what to put on 
or what to eat. If you cannot go to spread the word of God in all the corners of the earth, how will people know Christ? Christ denied himself of all pleasures and took up his cross to do his Father's work. Show me a follower of Christ who lies comfortably in his bed and sends others to do the work for him. Paul suffered a lot and was beaten many times. When you go on ministry work, you may return to find all your things stolen. When you come back, all you ought to say who all you have to say wholeheartedly is, May the peace of God be with the thieves. This is the life that the heavenly ones must live. How pleasant would it be for one to leave his car and go to do things for others and to see him walk without his pair of shoes, even in his house. How nice would it look for one to see a lawyer with all his knowledge going about without his pair of shoes serving his junior. Pe people may say of a truth, God is on earth. That is not all. If you don't attach yourself to the lower class of people, you are not fit for heaven. Money is money, but you have special duty to do with your hands. You can't see God in your money, but people can see Christ in your lives. There is Christ in all the parts of your body. People will see him in you and what he tells you to do. It was because of St. Paul that certain great men were converted. Peter and some of his disciples were, were mere fishmen were mere fishermen and the higher class of people wouldn't have listened to them. Those great men were saved through Paul by going out to serve others, people will be drawn to God. Golden text, St. Matthew chapter 10 verse 37. He that loveth father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Now, have you seen the point? If your child is sick, you won't attend service because you love the child more than Christ. Anybody who loves Christ has no time for the things of the world. Christ does not think about the things of this world. You cannot serve two masters if you love Christ. You must hate your parents, children, wives, husbands, and so, and so forth. Those who hate Christ hate his gospel because they are the children of darkness. They have no share in the kingdom of heaven. Those who will follow him and those who love him more than father, mother, child, etc. The behavior of all those who are for Christ must be able to win the children of perdition for Christ. All those who hate Christ of all those who hate Christ love all those who hate him. If their parents were were juju makers and snuffers, their children will support them either financially or otherwise. You always take the advice of the people you love. The instructions you receive from your parents often lead you astray. You remember King Solomon? God advised him to leave the woman he was keeping or else he would go astray. He refused because he loved the woman. He did what she wanted by building a temple for our goddess. For this reason, God departed from him and Babylon fell to rise no more. You see where the love of children
parents and other people lead us to. Therefore, if you follow them, you are lost. Christ the, is the only advisor. Christ alone is the only one who can advise properly. I do not say that you must hate your people. This gospel is not for flesh and blood, but for spiritual ears. Your wives or children don't take you to heaven. No matter how strong and healthy they may be, Christ alone can take you there because he reigns over heaven and earth. If you do love Christ, you can no longer love your relatives and the material things of this world. Those who will be taken up alive are those who love Christ only. What Christ loves is what they love. Christ said, He who loves me should keep my commandments. Therefore, what Christ doesn't love, they don't love. You cling to your village. What do you get from there? Christ gives you the blessings, the blessings, but you take them to the people of the world. Christ loves you so much that he gave his life for you. What have you done for him? Instead, you center your thoughts on your children who disobey you and fornicating and do all sorts of evil. Your father is nothing and fornicating, yet you cling to him and you don't leave him. If they are ill, you prefer to stay with them. For this reason, you find it difficult to serve God. Brethren, do you see your love? Is this your preparation for heaven? Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. May the Lord bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.